start again then. Sat in the, uh, the studio, gazing out. Not a bad outlook from here. Remains of some black tulips. And some heli bores. Have to be a bit careful with the pansy pot. It's got a bit of damage here and there. Tony Astor showing some signs. Oasis is doing its level best. Forget me not to give it a go. Remains of a few uh, bluebells there. The old uh, snow in the mountain behind. Fertilleries. The fertilleries have gone to seed. That's the money shot, I think. The burnham is about as good as it's ever been. Do his best. That is the old snow on the mountain. With a few forget me not thrown in for a good measure. A few more escapees. Tosia's pass is best. Dogwood just about to uh, flower. If you can call it a flower, that is. Montana doing its best to uh, hide the oil tank. Coronilla has been flowering all winter, giving off a beautiful perfume. And it's uh, best now, it's complimenting the, the burnham over there. Bit of a mixed bag. Some good, some not so good. A little bit of colour. Since I filmed that, the uh, tulips have now been poured and are drying out on the uh, windowsill in my studio. Here we are again then, another Friday, another Parkinson's Walks. Hope I find you well, no matter where you are located in this world of ours. Right, now, I was a little bit concerned about the format of uh, my presentations, if you like. So I did pose the question last week, should I change the format of those blackbirds flying past the door? They stay on their side of the fence. Uh, so I did pose the question, should I change the format? Uh, the general contentious seems to be leave it alone. Uh, one here from Rodney Masters, a comment from Rodney Masters. 
You're already in anticipation, aren't you, Ron? Good morning, Ron. Changing such an entertaining format would be akin to splitting Morecambe and Royce. I think that might be just a tad over the top, Rodney. I'm not, not sure. Now, Peter Smith is very brave. Peter says, Ron, if you decide to read extracts from the local telephone directory, I will still watch. Is that so, Peter? Is that so? Careful what you wish for. Ooh, very careful. <laughs> all the old hands on you now all say, my God, what has he done? <laughs> I said, Peter's an old hand, should know better. <laughs> James Weeks from uh, Canada. He said, ah, Sumac. Watching your videos each week is not like visiting a friend. It is visiting a friend. And it's something the official virtual mascot and I look forward to. Thank you, James. Andrew Merriman. He says, there's an old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> and point taken, Andrew. Uh, the thing is, is it broke or not? No, I don't think so. Actually, Andrew came up with an interesting idea. I think he suspects it's all getting a bit much. And uh, it's not getting any easier, I'll grant you that. Uh, and uh, so, uh, Andrew suggests, why not have it a three-week cycle? Where you have um, a film club, a vlog, and then a film. A few weeks like that's something to think of in the future, I guess, Andrew. But we're we're not quite there yet. We're getting there, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, vintage trains and abandoned railways. The channel of our Ron says, keep that family format going. Okay. You picked my favourite seaside town this week. Lots of happy memories of Lyme Regis, fossil hunting and rock pooling. A lovely part of Dorset. Yeah, it's beautiful down there. Pity the uh, picture quality wasn't uh, really up to it, but uh, you got the general idea, I think. And we're talking about frequency of uh, filming, weren't we, just then? West Country Wanderers, our Paul, says, I know someone who's doing two a day. He must be editing in his sleep. I don't think he's getting any sleep, uh, Paul. <laughs> he's doing two a day. Oh my God, mind boggling. David Bellani, our uh, Spain correspondent. A lovely part of the country, the Dorset coast. Lots of happy memories of camping there or travelling through on the way to Devon and Cornwall. Last time I was there, we stopped off at Seaton to have a trip on the tramway. Yeah, that's still going. Brilliant. Good luck from Spain. Thank you, David. Uh, Charles Patterson, thinking, <laughs> commenting on the quirkiness factor. Quirkiness factor confirmed. <laughs> it was a barrel organ, wasn't it? That was amazing. <laughs> Wonderful. Jim Nichols, I'm still intrigued by all those coloured handles in your studio. Are there any more hiding behind you? Or did the visible ones exhaust the possibilities in your local hardware store? <laughs> and I said to Jim, there's nothing on the end of those handles, of course. I mean, we can only afford the handles. <laughs> Michael from Poland, I think he's doing Michael. He's settling down a bit or not. I love your office come tool shed. I try to see each week if the coloured handles have changed their positions. The problem is I can't remember the order they were in from the week before. <laughs> that is the problem. Whereas Simon, our hairy golfer colleague, who's uh, at the moment doing uh, films, he went to Thailand golfing. Did lots of filming out there and on his channel if you go to Harry, the hairy golfer, there's lots of his uh, Thailand adventures. Well worth a look. He says, I do believe the spade handles in the shed are in the wrong order. Please rearrange as soon as possible. <laughs> I have. Or have I? <laughs> Simon reckons we must be roommates in the asylum. Yeah, I don't think you're too far wrong there, to be honest with you, Simon. Oh dear. Right, now. Stop press. Stop press. Are you ready for this? Exciting. Sue Mac MacArthur. Who's our... Uh, Channel mascot and uh, lives with James over in Canada over there. Peer pressure finally kicked in and James has bought a mobile phone. Wow! <laughs> wow! James is coming kicking and scratching into the 21st century. <laughs> However, he claims he'd only use it as a camera as he hasn't bought a SIM card yet. <laughs> this is a hard struggle, isn't it? Goodness me. Right, the film last week then was the. Um, uh, Tintern Railway Tunnel went hunting for that, didn't we? 
Hello, the place. Mark and Richardson comments, superb. I've walked that way a good few times, including the, to the tunnel entrance and further on to the quarry and Tidham Tunnel. It's one of my favourites. But the rocky climb to the track above the tunnel with the Y far below is tricky in places, especially if wet. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to tackle it in the wet, to be honest with you. Line on the Mary Travels. They're still got plenty of content on their channel if you want to pop and have a look. Your persistence finally paid off there. What a beautiful tunnel entrance, such wonderful stonework. It's, it's a joy to behold, isn't it? Wonderful. Jim Nichols, that's a beautiful area. It's a very long time since I saw Tintern Abbey, but I still remember my first view of it. Very special. Yeah, yeah, you get the right angle there. This is beautiful. Bishengo, or uh, Richard, ah, I wonder if the rubble in the tunnel mouth was the remains of the original blocking off. Yes, of course it is. Didn't think of that, did I? Yes, of course it is. Yeah, that's what they used to block it off. Then he says, a later date was then realised that access might be required to monitor stability. Well, monitor something, but yes, that's why they've done it, isn't it? So they can get access into the tunnel if needs be. Ah, oh, brilliant. Well done, Richard. Andrew Merriman. Our Andrew cottoned on to this one. I'm very surprised to see the remains of sleepers. Given the Wireworks branch line was taken up sometime later than the 6th of May 1945, the date it was taken out of use. The tunnel, which is 182 yards long, was on a sharp curve, hence the reason it had refuge so, so close to the entrance. Yeah, you see, I couldn't work that out. I thought, what's the point of having a refuge there when 10 paces this way is the tunnel entrance? Um, but as Andrew says, it's on a very sharp curve, and if something comes whistling around that corner, you want a refuge as... Uh, as near as you can possibly get it. Well done, Andrew. And Andrew then from there goes on and describes the layout of the whole area, including the wireworks uh, and all the bits and pieces round and about. And there's a fire that down there somewhere too, but it's uh, Andrew mentioned. So yeah, well done, Andrew. As always, guys, read his bits and pieces. I, I know a lot of you do because you comment to him and say thanks for his efforts. And we do thank you for that, Andrew. James Weeks. That was quite a hike. Never mind virtually. I actually felt it when you were going up that rocky incline. <laughs> Things here have gone from winter to summer. This is in Canada. Things here have gone from winter to summer in the past week. Spring. Oh, that's something that stores elastic potential energy. He's a physics teacher. It sure isn't a season round here anymore. OVM is outside panting on the floor of the garage trying to stay cool. I should go, go and join her if I were you, James. Sumac actually writes to us and says, thanks for the nice walk. Sorry I was drag, dragging a bit. It's very hot here now. And James refuses to turn on the air conditioning so close to when he's just turned off the heating. <laughs> James, <laughs> not much open. Poor dog, poor Sumac. Poor West Country Wanderers again. Great adventure, loved it. Stunning Y Valley location. Railways in a fabulous tunnel of boot. Yep, we had it all. Rodney Masters. <laughs> Hello Rod, another great video. Very interesting to see that approach to the tunnel from the other side. And the ladies were, oh that's Martin, sorry, no, we're, uh, we're away with Rodney up here. Another top class production from your film unit. It reminded me of that early scene in Bridge on the River Kwai where Jack Hawkins and William Holden and the Siamese twins, girls, ladies, traverse the torturous mountain journey. I made a picture of that, didn't I really? I want to start again. Rodney, I don't think it's like the bridge on the river, Coy. <laughs> Brilliant. Keep them coming, Rodney. Now, Martin Hall. See what gets right this time. Another great video. Very interesting to see the approach to the tunnel from the other side. And the ladies were very helpful. They were, they certainly were. They saved the day, really. It's a pity more people are not polite and friendly. The world will be a better place. Well, no one's going to argue with you there, Martin. That's very true. Calvin Phelps. Ah, we knew somebody with local interest would pop up, didn't we? Or local knowledge or whatever you want to call it. The tunnel entrance nearest the river crossing isn't visible from the path above it. Right. I think we've probably determined that. You would have to scale down through the thick bushes and trees to get to it. I certainly wouldn't advise it though as it, it is extremely slippery in places. Yeah, getting down would be one thing. You'd get down alright, you'd fall down, but getting back up. I suppose you came down the slope and you were right above the tunnel entrance and couldn't stop. 
Hmm. I, I did manage to get to a spot where I could see the arch of the entrance though. Did you now? So you actually got down there somewhere where you could see the... Oh, wish you hadn't said that, Calvin. Hmm. Right, okay. Moving swiftly on. David Berlani from Spain. Hi Ron, it's a shame you couldn't get to the other portal, but it was a lovely walk and lovely to hear the bird song. I came across plans to reinstate the bridge, but that was 10 years ago. It looks like quite a costly idea. That's all it needs, isn't it? Is that bridge put back into place? And what a cycle rider footpath that would be. Wonderful, yeah. So David's been doing some research and as he says, the dog didn't get my homework this week. <laughs> That's a, a famous school excuse, isn't it? Where's your homework? The dog has it. <laughs> ah, right. Okay. Film club this week. I was going to put some Denver up. I might still put some Denver up. Uh, but I fancy a bit of Ash Cutler. I think I've got some kicking around. Summer's coming up. So I'll give Ash a run. And in fact, uh, if I can't get that past the senses, it'll be Denver. And next week, Next week, we got to Portsmouth. It's the historic dockyard at Portsmouth. It's uh, well worth a look. Summer's coming, you might be visiting the country or you might be in the country looking to visit somewhere. This might give you an idea. It's uh, a nice place to look at. So we'll go down to Portsmouth. Bring your virtual uh, life, life aid, aid, your buoyancy aid if you like. No doubt Simon will be wearing his uh, silly water wings again. <laughs> And we're going to have a look at uh, Portsmouth then. So I'll see you down there next Friday. Don't be late. I drove my tractor through your haystack last night. I threw me face fart at your dog to keep quiet. Now someone's telling me that you move right and me.